Today on CCX News, bursting at the seams. How population growth has led to plans for growth in the Osseo School District. The Osseo Area School District is finding that some of its schools have gotten a little too crowded. As Kevin Miller reports, a school expansion and a brand new elementary school should give students some breathing room. The din of the lunchtime crowd at Maple Grove Senior High thunders as students bump elbows in the Crimson Cafe cafeteria. Today we don't have the capacity in this area to handle that. This building is already about 300 kids over its originally intended capacity. So you can see behind me with the, the sounds, we're busting at the seams a little bit here. It's part of a continuing trend of population growth due to new construction. Current estimates are showing at least 5,700 new housing units in the next five years in this northwest Maple Grove area that will contribute at least 1,000 new students for us. To make room, the Osseo Area School District is planning to blow out some brick walls. This building is looking at about a $57 million combination of additions and renovations. The cafeteria here is, is roughly half the size of what it needs to be. There's also big changes coming to the school library. So the media center will be completely opened up and redone just to kind of bring in a modern feel um, and, and make it much more of the hub of the building than it is today. But it's not only the high school that needs more space. The strategic plan at the district calls for construction of a new school in northwest Maple Grove. So we own a piece of property up near the Hindu temple. It's about 34 acres and we are planning for a elementary of a little over a thousand students. The $60 million school is in the design phase. We're excited we haven't built a new school in this district in almost 25 years, so uh, we're, we're overdue and ready. These are only two of the Osseo District's 66 planned construction projects. We've already got the first two teed up in Brooklyn Middle School and Northview Middle School that will start this summer. Kevin Miller. It's overdue. It's, it's time for our community to have this. CCX News. Construction of the new elementary school starts in 2025 and will take more than a year. The Maple Grove Senior High expansions will run from 2025 to 2027. Minnesota made headlines for being the leading tax credit state for children. A New Hope senator was the chief author of that legislation. And newsmakers Shannon Sladden sat down with Senator Ann Rest to talk about the first numbers generated from the child tax credit. We have in Minnesota the nation leading uh, uh, tax credit for children, the purpose of which is to really bring um, Minnesota families, low-income families, um, out of poverty. And it has, our tax credit will uh, reduce poverty, childhood poverty in Minnesota by, by one-third. 356,000 people, families, uh, taxpayers have um, already qualified. Uh, it is a tax credit for, um, um, per child, although um, we have uh, income limits to the point at which you can, your family can uh, receive it. But the average, the average tax credit going out in 2024 for 2023 is over $2,500 per family. So that, um, we, were, we are very, very um, proud of that. I'm proud to have been the chief author in the, in the Senate and um, certainly applaud uh, Governor Walz's leadership on it. All right, and this time around, working on bonding bills, one for the University of Minnesota projects. How does that benefit the state as a whole? Well, uh, the University of Minnesota is the economic engine, quite frankly, of, of the, um, of the state and our bonding proposal for this year um, in total was five hundred million dollars um, but the bonding bill itself is only about twice that much so we have different ways of um, uh, allocating starting with about a hundred and ten million dollars which is the the governor's proposal um, uh, spread among uh, four of the uh, five campuses and then um, and it's kind of a prioritizing the, the list of projects. Sure. But I think it's really important that what we're doing this year is um, emphasizing um, asset pre preservation, uh, maintenance um, projects for which there's 
not a whole lot of um, publicity, for example, of replacing a boiler. Sure. You know. It's but, not merely exciting, but, but it's important. But um, asset uh, maintenance, it's called um, by an acronym, HEPRA, um, but it is, um, it is what keeps the uh, university on all of its campuses uh, uh, working at full force and um, and serving the uh, the students that that go there uh, okay. and their and their families. So we're hoping um, for at least um, uh, 110, 120 million dollars. Um, and uh, we prioritize everything, and hopefully next year we'll come back and and go go with the second list that we also have prioritized. Always needs there. Grocery prices are still stubbornly high. That has local communities looking for creative ways to help others get nutritious food. In Crystal, the city has a garden available to the public next to the community center. They call it their edible courtyard. It started several years ago thanks to a Hennepin County public health grant. I thought it'd be really cool to, to do something like that in Crystal, um, just because it seemed like there was a need for fresh produce for people to um, have access to. The garden grows all kinds of fresh produce, fruits, herbs, and veggies. Volunteers help plant, water, and tend to the crops spring through fall. The courtyard harvested 180 pounds of produce last year alone.